Heads up, this podcast contains some swearing. Previously on Lost in Williamsburg. Oh no, that creepy kid from downtown. My friend says you need to find your living body. Belle, would you like to come over for dinner? Why not? It sounds lovely. How about if I stop at your place after 6.30? Well, I normally wouldn't ask you to cancel something on short notice. Aaron, what are you looking at? That freezer. I'm in there. What? You can't be. Just open it. I can't believe it. That's me in that freezer. And that professor you told me about. Oh my god, this is soul crushing. This can't be right. If your body's dead, you wouldn't be rocking around like a no-brainer. Wait. Your body's still warm. What? Barely. Warm? Really? Yes, the lady's cold. She's definitely dead. But not you. That's really odd. So Matthew, we found my body. What do we do now? What do your instructions say to do? Well, this isn't exactly how I thought it would go. But I guess we should give it a try. I have to read this spell. This is ridiculous. I can't believe a stupid spell will actually work. Now you stand there, and I'll read the spell. But I... I I'm not sure I want oh, to. Oh, Magnum Anomos. Oddity me camare. Teneret. Wait. Udinum. Et piatus. A breamer. Desolatus. Stop. Corporus. Servianus. What's going on? TB. Vivo! What are you doing? I'm sorry to tell you this, Aaron, but I'm going in. You're going into my body? Don't you dare touch my body, you little twerp. Sorry. See you on the other side. Oh my god. What just happened? Uh, uh, holy crap. My, my body's moving. Matthew, are you in there? This body is stiff. Get out of my body! Oh, that feels better. Fingers moving, toes wiggling. Stop! Where do you think you're going? I'm sorry, Aaron. I'll explain, but first things first. I need to get out of this freezer. Stop where you are, Matthew. Julie, what are you doing here? I'm trying to help. You shouldn't have trusted that kid. Oh, God, Julie. Why do you have to stick your nose into this? Me? Stick my nose? You've got to be kidding. Give him his body back. What is it with all these possessions? A healthy body is a very valuable commodity, Aaron. Let's try out these legs. Wait. Yes, they're working. Oh my god, he's... I'm walking around. Ah, alive again. It feels amazing. Actual air in my lungs, wonderful. Stop! Ow, my head hurts a bit though. That professor really did a number on you. That's my body, Matthew. Give it back. And what's that little tingling down there? Oh yes, I'll put that to very good use. Keep your hands off that. Ladies of Williamsburg, look out. Matthew's back. What? You're nine years old. You don't have a clue about how to use that thing. 309 years old is more like it. And believe you me, I know what to do with a body. This isn't the first one I've ever borrowed. What? Aaron, it's you, my friend, who doesn't realize what a gift a healthy young body is. Look at me. I can run, I can dance, make love. I'm king of the world. What do we do, Julie? What do we do? I don't know. Don't upset him. You don't want him to hurt your body. Oh, I'll take good care of it. I'll be using it for quite a while. You can't take this away from me, Matthew. That body's all I have left. Julie, do something. I'm sorry, it's too late. There's nothing I can do now. Damn it! Matthew, what are you going to do? You can't walk around in my body. People will recognize you. I'm all over the news. So what? So what? What are you going to say? You can't pass for me. You don't know anything about me. Really? Have you never heard of a little thing called amnesia? Oh, doctor, I don't remember a thing. Who am I? You asshole. Oh, yeah, and your girlfriend, Jordan? She is totally hot. She'll be so happy to see me. I'm sure she'll do anything to bring my memory back. I'm going to fucking kill you. Too late. It's already done. Ah! Calm down, Aaron. Getting angry isn't going to help. Damn it. Hold on a second. The police. Matthew, if you claim you've lost your memory, they'll never believe you. They'll think you killed that woman in the freezer and that you're just covering up. They'll throw you in jail. Well, you've got a point, Julie. Things might get a bit sticky. I guess my other option would be to jump a train going up to D.C. or somewhere. What are you? 
Some 1930s hobo? You need papers, a social security number. Listen, Aaron, it's been fun chatting, but I really should get going. Whoa, something's wrong. What is it? Ah, I feel sick. Julie, what's happening? Is he dying? I don't know. This body, it's tainted. There's someone else in here. What? What did uh, you say? Julie, what uh, did he say? I didn't hear. Hex... Hexabeth. Hexabeth? Uh, what is that? I don't... Uh, know. Damn you, Hexabeth. You always ruin everything. Don't want this body anymore. Don't hurt it. Please don't hurt it. Gotta get out of this worthless thing. He's leaving your body. Ugh. Ugh. You can have it back, Aaron. That body's useless. Good. Stay away from me and my body, you little creep. Don't worry. You can stay here and figure out what to do with it. Wait! And the professor in the freezer, too. Good luck with that. Wh where are you going? Don't stop him, Aaron! Let him go! <laughs> what happened? D did he kill it? My body? I don't think so. Your spirit is still here. So your body must still be alive. There's a faint pulse! I can see the vein in his... in your neck moving. Damn it! There must be a way for me to get back in. You can't. How did that spell go? Clam, ad, tinner... I can't remember what he said. Wait, I hear footsteps. And it doesn't sound like Matthew. Oh my god. What now? Why the fuck is this door open? <laughs> Jesus, how did that kid get on the floor? Oh shit, that's him. Julie, that's him. Who's him? The guy. From the house, from the basement. He shot the professor. I better make a call. Who's he calling? Mr. Tolliver, it's me. Listen, we've got a problem. Someone's on to us. I'll get it. Hello, can I help you? Yes, I'm here to see Valerie. Is she expecting you, Mr. Uh... Jackson, Ed Jackson. Yes, yeah, she's expecting me. We're going out for dinner. I called her at the library this afternoon. Oh, well, nice to meet you, Ed. Do come in. I'm John. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Valerie! Mr. Jackson is here. I'll be right there. Hi, Ed. Oh, I see you've met my dad. And this is my mother, Jessie. Hello, Mr. Jackson. Nice to meet you, Ms. Dunhill. Can I get you a drink? I'm having a little old bourbon myself. How about you? No thanks. I'm fine. I'm driving. So Ed, Valerie tells me you're going through some tough times right now. I'm sorry to hear that, but I know you'll get through it. Valerie's been through some tough times herself. Mom. What do you mean? I, um, I told my mom a little bit about your, um, wife moving out. I'm sorry I shouldn't be talking about your personal business. Yeah, I wish you hadn't said anything. Listen, Ed, marriages can be rough. It's something we've all got to deal with. Well, not Valerie. Would you please just stop? Say, Ed, how long have you lived in Williamsburg? Oh, I've lived here a few years. It's amazing the changes it's gone through, don't you think? Yeah, I guess. Well, maybe you didn't know Williamsburg before all these damn developers got their hands on it. There used to be so much beautiful farmland around here and woods. Val and I used to spend hours wandering down by the river, catching frogs and fireflies. Oh, That's because there was nothing else to do around here. The whole town shut down at 6 o'clock. Well, you managed to find plenty of things to do, Valerie. Oh, Jesus Christ, Mom. Valerie, are you ready to go? Yes, I am. So, where are you going for dinner, Ed? Hey, have you ever been to the Yorktown Steakhouse? Uh, no. I was thinking we might go somewhere over in High Street. That sounds great. You didn't make reservations? I hope you don't have any trouble finding a table. You know, you could just eat here. I've got plenty of food, and I was already making dinner. It's fine, Mom. I'm sure we won't have any trouble finding a table. Yeah. We should get going. High Street, huh? They built a lot of new upscale places there, but I remember when that was just a couple of run-down tourist hotels. And Madame LaBelle had her fortune-telling <laughs> fortune business there. That was a long time ago, Dad. Yeah, I guess so. 
hey, you should go out to the Ham Shack down on Richmond Road. They have the best ribs in town. John, that place has been shut down for a couple of years now. Really? Oh. What about Rick Seafood? They got a great buffet. And you should see the fancy Greek outfits they make the waitresses wear. Dad, that's a car wash now. What? Times change, John. Of course you wouldn't know. I can't remember the last time we went out for a nice dinner. Well then, let's make a date. What do you say? We could even go out for dancing. You used to love that. Oh, Dad, where were you eating? Come here. Come here, girl. I still got a couple of moves left. Not now, John. Ahem. Okay, I'm going to let you two work this out. Ed, let's get out while we can. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to keep you waiting. But you should really try one of the old places. Spend your money in the community. (sighs) All right, then. Well, I hope you two can talk things out tonight. And by the way, Ed, whatever it is you're going through with your wife, I'm sure you'll be able to handle it. Just don't let her push you around. Stand up for yourself. Thanks. Well, it was nice to meet you both. You too, Ed. Yes. Good to meet you. I'll see you both later. Good night. After you, Valerie. Good night, Dad. Good night, sweetie. Jesus. I thought we'd never get out of there. Is your dad always that drunk? I could smell his breath through the door. He's had a bad day today. That's a shame. Now get in the car. Oh, uh, hello there. Hello. Ed, I thought it was just going to be the two of us tonight. This is my associate. Hello, Miss Dunhill. Hello, Mr. uh... All right, let's get going. Yes, sir. Ed, where are we going? How long is this going to take? I'm not sure. It depends on how energetic you're feeling tonight. Not very, I must say. Well, you might want to rest up a bit then. (sighs) Oh, man. I'm so screwed. Stuck in limbo somewhere between living and dead. And now some guys just packed up my body and drove off into the night. I had one chance to get back into my body and I'll probably never see it again. Julie, this is where you're supposed to say, don't worry, Aaron, we'll figure something out. I don't know what to tell you, Aaron. Maybe we'll think of something. What were you doing back in that old kitchen anyway? Were you and Matthew in on this body snatching thing together? I didn't have anything to do with it, I swear. Then how did you know we would be there? Well... Yes? Uh, I was following you? Following me? Why? I wanted to see what Matthew was up to. What do you mean? I saw you talking to him earlier, outside your dorm, and I was just curious. Did he tell you he had some friend who was going to get you back into your body? Yes. Did he do the same thing to you? He tried, but I never trusted him. That kid's always been a troublemaker. I avoid him when I can. Why didn't you warn me? You could have said something. Well, I did try to help, remember? You were kind of an ass. I didn't have a clue what was going on. And why exactly should I help you? I don't know you. So you're just going to let him steal my body? I didn't know that was going to happen. Maybe he was going to help you. He could have helped me too. I shouldn't have gone with him. I knew better. I knew something was wrong. But what choice did I have? He might have been telling the truth. It might have worked. It's understandable that you'd want to try. But you didn't fall for it. Jesus, I'm such an idiot. Listen, why don't you come back to my place? You can rest there and we can talk things through. Your place? You mean Worthington Hall? No, that's just where I hang out a lot of the time. I mean my house here in Williamsburg, where I grew up. It's just down the road a bit, on Harrison. I thought you didn't trust me. Well, we'll see about that. John, I told you if you're going to sit out here on the patio, don't leave the door open. But the temperature's perfect. This might be the last warm night of the year. You're going to let all the mosquitoes in the neighborhood into this house. I'll be scratching for days. Can't we get some fresh air in there? 
God knows we need it. Well, then just go by a screen door. Why do you have to make everything so damn complicated? I was just about to ask you the same thing. What are you doing out here anyways? Still moping about that farm? Leave me alone about that farm. You don't understand. I understand. It was in your family for years. I know it's hard to see it go. Jesse, did you read how much that land sold for? 3.3 million. John, you shouldn't obsess about that. Million. There's nothing you can do. That money should have been ours. What the Thompsons did to my dad. I know. It wasn't fair. But face it, your father wasn't the brightest guy. He got into a mess and all he could do was sell that farm. We could have done so much with that money. All those medical bills and Valerie wouldn't have to live with us and look after everything. John, we're doing fine. And Valerie could live on her own if she had more ambition. Things are what they are. Why are you always ragging on Valerie? I hate it when you do that. (sighs) By the way, who was that ass, Ed, that was taking her out? He rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know. I'm her mother, not her best friend. I swear the way you carried on with him. You always sound like a hick when you've been drinking. So what? Maybe I am a bit of a hick. You knew that when you married me. (sighs) You've been listening to the audio drama Lost in Williamsburg. Tonight's episode was entitled Friend or Foe. Our distinguished cast included Casey Johnson as Aaron Seeger, Max Cooper as Matthew Whaley, Juna Knight as Julie, Tony Spunzo as Jake, Linda Hertzler as Valerie Dunhill, Joan Turner as Jesse Dunhill, Mike Turner as Ed, and introducing Philip Bircher as John Dunhill. Tune in again next week as the story continues. So here we are, Aaron. Look at that moon hanging over the marsh. Jake, turn off here. Ed, uh, this is not good. Lost in Williamsburg is produced, written, directed, scored, recorded, edited, sound designed, and art directed by Philip Merritt. And although he works day and night on this podcast, Lost in Williamsburg would not be possible without the greatly appreciated contributions of the many cast members and the fine folks over at freesound.org. This is your host, Caroline Corney, saying thank you for listening. And remember, be wary when someone you barely know offers you a helping hand. Sure, there's a chance that they'll be genuinely concerned about your well-being, but there's an equal chance that they will kill you. Good night.